In position layout 103. This project could be and has been also called Print Merge 4 because we're going to go a little deeper with the imposition tool and also combine that with Print Merge. But the real details of this Print Merge job are covered in another tutorial. But we're going to use the same layout and accomplish some rather unique requirements. Here are the requirements. We need to use a sublimation printer to wind up printing on 12 inch by 8 inch brass 2 by 8 name plates. In other words, 6 2 by 8 name plates on a sheet of 8 by 12 brass at a time. These need to be precisely located over the sublimation paper so that after being printed, after being heat pressed, then a precision shear could whack them off at over two inches. So this is our layout. This is where the name is going to go. This is where the room number is going to go. We're going to jump now to an Excel spreadsheet to show you the data that has already been keyed in. Two columns, name and room number. You'll notice that the name, the length of the name, varies quite a bit. That's one of the challenges of this print merge. But the broadest compatibility between operating systems, different versions of CorelDRAW, different versions of Excel, is to indeed save the data as a tab delimited file. So I'm going to tell it file save as we're going to tell it instead of an XLS that we want tab delimited here is tab delimited and we're going to call this print merge for text and we'll click on save it says it already exists that's fine I'm going to cover it up and it warns me that if I save it this way, that I will lose some of the Excel capabilities. Now, we're not covering up the Excel file. We're just saving this as a secondary tab delimited file. So I'm going to tell it yes. A real gotcha here that I need to call to your attention is compatible as tab delimited is. One little problem is that you can't open that up in CorelDRAW unless you close it in Excel. It'll give you a cryptic message and you'll think something's broke. It's not. It just can't have that file open in two, two places. So I'm going to shut down this file. No, nope, don't want to save it. I already saved it. We'll minimize this. Now we're back at CorelDRAW. And at CorelDRAW, then we're going to do a print merge file. Uh, just before we do, let me show you a couple of the unique things about this layout. The, really, the one thing is the fact that this is a paragraph text. I'm holding down the Alt-Enter, which is pretty universal in Epilogue. We'll call up the Properties box. Alt-Enter. And then we're going to show you that the paragraph characteristics of this, I have it centered left and right. Under the frame, I have it, the vertical alignment is center aligned. So I have that center left and right, center up and down so that if the name is too long, as some of them will be, it will break up into two or three or four lines, but they will still be centered and even with the room number on the right. So that's a little bit of a unique part um, of this uh, print merge file. So now we're going to do a print merge. File, print merge, we're going to create load merge fields, since we've already got the data, we're going to import that next, and we're going to import it from a file. We're going to look for that, and we call that print merge. Oop. First, we need to tell it that we have a TXT file. 
When Excel saves a tab delimited file, it uses the extension of TXT. Cautious, there are a few other TXTs it might create, but always a tab delimited unless you change it will have a TXT. So I'm going to tell it to show me the TXT files. I save that as print merge 4 TXT. So we're going to select that and open it. We'll go to next and it shows me the two column headers. Those must be there. Next, there's all of our data. There's 63 different layouts. We'll click on next and if we had typed all that in, we would save it. But instead, it's already saved, so we're going to click on Finish. Then Print Merge Toolbar pops up. And at this time, we're going to merge to a new document. Now, that requires CorelDRAW X4 or 5 or 6. Previous versions do not have this terrific new feature, Merge to New Document. Right now, we're working on Print Merge 4 CDR. When I click on Merge to New Document, that creates a new document, note called Print Merge 1, and there's the data. And then we're going to look through some of the files. There's a page 1, page 2, page 3. Let's go ahead and go to our file and print preview and move ahead what CorelDRAW always does if our page size which was 8 by 2 is smaller than our printer and this sublimation printer is 11 by 14 then it throws it out in the middle we can't use that for a laser engraver but normally for a sublimation printer it's exactly what we want so I'm going to click on the imposition layout and we're going to tell it we want, as our specification calls for, six plates up and down. We'll go back to our, as a matter of fact, let's look at that and see how that's looking. Indeed, we have six plates. Notice plate number three was too long. It broke it up. As a matter of fact, let's look through all of the signatures. I'm going to click on uh, Signature 1, Signature 2, Signature 3, and that all looks pretty good. If we see any problems, of course, we could go back to our CorelDRAW file and make some modifications. That's a great part about printing to a new document. Each one of those are editable. One other thing that we must do, and that is this is sublimation, so we must mirror those. So now we've mirrored them. The last thing we need to do, because I'm reminding you that we need to be able to lay precisely a 12 by 8 plate over the data. So that calls for, let's go to Marks Placement and tell it we'd like crop marks. So now, when we print that, the crop marks will be outside the plate. We can't have those marks on the plate, but the main purpose for this is we can put our 12 by 8 between those four corners and know that they're precisely located, and those are ready to print. Project complete.